Good morning, Sylvia. Hi, dear. A trip is about. <laughs> a trip is about to begin. So the adventure begins. Hopefully, it'll be two weeks of a lot of fun and memories. Good morning, Sylvia. I just uh, spoke to a fellow that had a an ST, I guess a Honda ST 1300, I think, parked right beside her all night long, so she wasn't lonely during the night. Some scenery that is not like 100 miles of Myrtle Beach like the rest of this afternoon has been. It has been horrible. 100 miles of putt-putt golf courses and uh, red lights. Well, yesterday, it's kind of a bad day as far as the afternoon and the traffic I hit. And when I looked for an alternate motel, when I saw this one, I knew I had to stay the night here because, voila, where did you get? Waffle House. It has a Waffle House. So today we'll start off nice. Good morning, Sylvia. Today is going to be another road trip day I believe just hauling butt to get away from civilization a little bit it's a lighthouse and I wanted to get closer to it because it looks kind of neat the way they built this thing here but I have to go through that, and I'm not feeling that adventurous today, so. This is interesting. I had no idea that it even existed. I don't ever talk politics or religion because everyone's already got their mind made up, so I'm not making any political statement here. But this is the Jefferson Davis Home and Presidential Library. The dude has a presidential library. They just find that fascinating. Anyway, as I said, Jefferson Davis, <laughs> home and library. I had no clue. Made a quick fuel stop and now we're back on the road again. I'm going to try to make it to a little town called Winnie, Texas tonight. Good morning, Sylvia. We're about to start day four of our adventure and get a late start this morning. There's a little band of rain. It looks like, according to the map, it's just right over this motel. So I don't expect to be delayed long and uh, we'll soon be on the road. So it's Wednesday morning, and looking at the radar, I made a good decision last night. I'm at the Blue Dot, west of San Antonio, and I knew that this uh, band of weather was probably moving south a little bit, 
This is the weather that my wife will get, I think tomorrow night, with uh, tornadoes and hail and uh, some pretty high winds. But it looks like I'm going to be good today. I'm just on the backside, so I should be fine. And I'm headed in a couple of days up into the New Mexico area, and it looks like they got snow. So should be some very nice riding there, a little cooler than what I've been through lately. Good morning, Sylvia. About to begin day five of our adventure. It's a nice crisp 59 degrees, a perfect riding weather. The storm that's going to hit the eastern United States is there in the background. I'm on the other side of it, so should have good weather today. On the road again. needed a quick butt break and this seemed like a good place to stop. I'm still on the Twisted Sisters ride. I was going to go to a local attraction called the Devil's Sinkhole, but I couldn't get there from anywhere that I was. My Garmin GPS was no help and Google Maps kept trying to take me down a ranch road. I don't know, that might be a thing around here, but I'm not going to open a gate and go down a gravel road try to get to a state park so I canceled that idea the saloon and courtroom of Judge Roy B and it seems pretty legit um, here's a photo on a display that looks pretty much like this building I'll show you in just a moment Another photo of this building. And here is a building. Jersey Lily. Now there's a Texas DOT marker that seems to make everything legit. And on the inside is pretty neat. To the right, we have the the bar, and this sign here claims that it's a original Jersey Lily Saloon on this exact site and in this very building. Hard liquor and harsh justice. And I especially like the the stove over on the other side. These walls could talk. What kind of tales would they tell? back of the building toward the front. Sylvia. Today begins day six of our adventure. I'm getting a very late start today because I decided not to go to Big Bend National Park. Apparently this is their busiest month and with the pandemic easing up they have something like 25 percent above their normal busy time and I'm in no mood to deal with people and traffic. So that gives me an extra day so stayed in late, worked on my blog. I already have a room for tonight, about an hour down the road. 
and I have no idea what I'm going to do today. I'm just going to see what I can get into. I'm at Fort Davis, apparently the best preserved southwestern frontier fort around. And I was told that this is like officer's row. I think it would be for the married officers and the one directly in front right here is the commander and uh, on down to the right more quarters and then I was told the two-story was for uh, bachelor officers I guess that did not have wives with them and then if I pan around a little far off but that's the enlisted men's quarters and it wasn't horrible high ceilings uh, they had bunks um, shelving you know had decent space between them uh, two stoves um, better than i thought it would be actually one more shot of officer's row swinging around to the enlisted men's barracks it's another beautiful day 59 degrees observatory but it's closed so, I won't be going in there to look around. I'm still glad that I came. 6,200 feet in elevation and nice and cool. I like it. Good morning, Sylvia. It's time for day seven of our adventure. It's about 40 degrees, so I've got my heated jacket on. I've got my heavier gloves and uh, what I call my neck condom to keep my neck warm. And it's going to be a great day. I wanted to do a sunrise ride this morning. I think I'm getting off to a good start for the day. It's going to be a good day. Eh, GoPro doesn't do too well with that, but it won't be long. Yeah. Ignore that traffic barrel. And enjoy the quiet. It's going to be a good day. Interesting. A they call it a stage stand. They call it a station. Uh, here for a year or so, 1858, to 1859. So I won't bore you with all the details, but this part here I find fascinating. There was a type of coach built that could travel 120 miles per day, carrying nine passengers, 12,000 letters, six horses or mules pulled each wagon. Uh, anyway, I find it fascinating that they could travel 120 miles in a day. I had no clue. And look at my view behind me. Wow. Absolutely gorgeous. Another deep blue sky day. It's about 35 degrees. Perfect riding weather. Love it. I love these little places in the middle of the desert. Um, I won't attempt to pronounce the name of this place, but a couple of things that I find interesting. It was started in the 1870s by two brothers with a few cattle. It was owned by a number of people over the years. Uh, eventually it became uh, a community center for dances and other social gatherings. Uh, there's a post office here. They ate a lot of beans, apparently. Uh, but the most important thing is it had uh, a spring and all these places out west where you have a little building little community or a ranch 
there's always got to be a source of water and this one is kind of interesting I have a spring house and it says that this spring flows at six gallons a minute so I don't know if this doesn't look like the original structure but I'm sure there would have been a building over it because the water would have been cool and that would have been a place to keep uh, I don't know milk I don't know if they had perishables but I'm sure if they kept something in the spring house and it's six gallons a minute if you have water you can grow crops have an orchard all kinds of things but you just have to have water and here they do it's pretty neat so I had to do some interesting math about half an hour ago I fueled up last night and I rode about 80 miles to Guadalupe Park and I'm leaving there and I checked the GPS like I always do how far it is to the next gas station and it's about 95 miles and I start doing the math rounding down just to be conservative I figure about 180 miles to the tank I think I would get more but I, be conservative and I've already consumed 80 miles of that 180 so I've got 100 miles and just 95 to where I'm going now I'm almost positive that I can get there without running out of fuel because like I said I'm, I'm rounding down being conservative but did I really top the tank off last night did I you know pump it up in the middle get all I could I don't know what if I hit strong headwinds get stuck in traffic what if that gas station at 95 miles is not open I've had that happen before also so I did what can only happen in Texas or in the southwest I went the wrong way for 35 miles here to this single 24 hour unattended fuel station and got fuel now I'll return travel 35 miles back to my starting point but at 180 miles to the tank, I've got 95 from where I was, and then 35 from here, that's 130 miles. I know I've got 180 in the tank, so at maximum thrust, <laughs> with a full load of fuel, I'm fine, no matter what the headwinds or fuel consumption, because I'm at 5,000 feet in elevation also, and I know that affects fuel power. So anyway, it could only happen in the American West. But it's still a beautiful day. It's a good ride. It's all good. Good morning, Sylvia. Time for day eight of our adventure. And I got up early for the sunrise and I beat around and almost waited too late. through the these pine trees I think they're ponderosa pines that's what I always call them I don't know but I'm at about 8200 feet in elevation 59 degrees completely clear sky there's no smoke or blowing sand like I've been through in the last couple of days uh, very good day very good day I'm at the VLA or a very large array and I'm not going to visit because I've been here a couple of times before, but I just wanted to stop and uh, it's a 360 here. It's beautiful. The, the colors are, uh, the sky's dark blue and um, the grass, whatever it is, is very, I'm going to call it brown, not tan, whatever. It's just a very nice view and color. Sylvia, starting day nine of our adventure. And I'm getting a late start today. Everyone else here is gone. But I slept in on purpose. I was pretty tired last night and I have an easy day today. So uh, it was on purpose. I'm feeling refreshed, ready to go. 
trying out this new camera. Very nice park. There's no one here. And uh, it's an interesting place. This was established by the Spaniards back, I think, in the 1600s. And originally, they were only here a few years. It was abandoned. Uh, it was abandoned once for like 200 years, and it was reoccupied in the mid-1800s. But I'm just amazed at the, the structures and all the manpower that it took to gather these rocks and to build walls. And I see wood. I assume it's original wood. I really don't know. But to cut the wood, uh, a lot of work. And this is the, I guess, the main church sanctuary. I'm not sure what it's called. But the height of the wall... It's incredible. I don't know if I give a perspective or not, but uh, it's a big wall. How long these uh, blades are for those windmills? There's one. Wow. Notice how far it sticks over even beyond the end of the trailer, and the trailer is huge. Very interesting. Here in the American West, you never pass up a gas station. So I certainly don't mean any disrespect or anything about where I am, but doesn't this look like the scene from the Clint Eastwood movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly? I'm not going to begin to try to pronounce this, uh, but this is another uh, ruins, Pueblo, Franciscan mission kind of thing. Uh, and there off in the distance is the main part. It's just the church, and they call it a convento, church and convento. This thing is bigger than it looks from the outside, from the front. Took a lot of people to build this. Look at a couple of websites for roadside oddities or attractions, and I saw this one a few years ago and made a note of it. Some old geezer many, many years ago started making headstones or plaques out of tin and punching them with nails to make, write people's names and inscriptions. So I'll try to show you a couple of them. So baby of Harry and Catalina McAfee. God, baby, baby McAfee at risk. Made by H. McAfee. So the guy that did all this, the, this, this baby might have been related. Let's see, Catholic Cemetery. Found in 1900. Chile, New Me. I guess it's New Mexico. And if you dump trash in this area, You'll be prosecuted in court. <laughs> Here's another McAfee. This one has a lot of inscriptions. Here rests a soldier in glory and honor. Made by Chris McAfee. This is an interesting one. There's a little model church top of the grave. And then a whole diorama inside. Interesting. Well, this was a bit of an oddity, but I'm glad that I stopped. Kind of neat. Good morning, Sylvia. I forget what day we're in. I think it's day 10. And my weather app said it should be snowing by now. But it's not, so maybe that's a good thing. But I'm going in that direction, north, and that's where the dust devil came last night. That nearly got me. But anyway, might be rain, might be snow, I don't know, but I'm not at work, so it's all good. Well, it's a little different day today, 39 degrees when I got out. And my weather app predicted snow. I don't see it yet. 
No rain yet, so it's still a good day. But uh, definitely the sky looks a little different today. Still a good day. I'm not at work. <laughs> so I'm inside the Pecos National Historical Park. And it's another uh, Pueblo Spanish uh, church ruin kind of thing. So I want to try to make it up to that ruin to look around. But it looks like I've got to go right and then left. Um, park ranger said we're going to get one to four inches of snow here today. It's snowing right now. She said, but the big storm comes in on Wednesday. So... Wednesday I'll be Oklahoma, somewhere over in there. I won't be here, so, and I'm not going to stay here long. I don't want to get caught in much snow on the road. Well, this is another neat building. Snowflakes are getting a little more serious now, getting larger, and I'll be able to see it in the video, but uh, I think it's time for me to get out of here. It's still better than being at work. Well, it was all fun and games until it got real. Now it's building up on the road. It's slush, it's not frozen to the road because air temperature is still about 36, 37, but uh, this is a little more interesting now. Well, like I said, that was fun until it wasn't anymore, until it got serious. Oh, man. Now I got behind a snow plow, and things went a little bit easier after that. But, got a little snow. Oh, man. I'm ready for a nap. Crap. Follow us, bobbystuff.com. Don't follow me today. But it is a pretty view. Still better than being at work. Okay, the sun left a long time ago. Oh, man. I don't think I ever got ice for my cooler today. Day 11 of our adventure. Clear, cold day, no snow in sight. And the weather app says today I should be okay. Good morning, Sylvia. You've had a cold night. Wow, heavy frost on the trailer. Heavy frost on the cover. That thing may be a little bit stiff packing up this morning. And poor Sylvia is covered in road grime and dirt. You may have to visit a car wash. But anyway, it's going to be another good day. I'm not at work. Good morning, Sylvia. Day 12 of our adventure. 
And we did a very smart thing yesterday by just hauling butt to get to El Reno. It's snowing everywhere west of us. Snowing in Santa Rosa, Moriarty. Looks like they even got snow or ice in Amarillo. Hence the reason for putting brine on the bridges. So I blew by some places yesterday that I really wanted to stop and look around at, but it was smart to just get here. I'm done with the snow for a while. This place is actually pretty neat and I've been here before, but have never been inside. So I'm gonna go inside and take a look around. There's my bike out on the road. I'm in the, in the round barn. And the lighting is probably gonna suck, but this is the second floor, the upper part of the barn. And the roof is amazing. It's a huge big dome. Very, very neat. So the Arcadia Round Barn was built in 1898. And they talk about Route 66 and it came through here. And part of the road was built with convict labor. <laughs> Paved in 1929 through town. And there's the Round Barn. Definitely worth a stop on your Route 66 travels. Pretty neat, and if you stop, you definitely have to go up on the upper floor and take a look at the roof from the inside. Very neat. This has been on my bucket list for a while. It's the ruins of an old Conoco service station, apparently. But there's a sign here that talks about counterfeiting and something about Al Capone in the 20s and 30s and how this rear window here had a wooden door over it and there's a back room where they kept the plates, the press, the ink, everything to make counterfeit $10 bills. And I guess it got away with it for a while, but as usual, you finally get caught. And I can't read all of the sign on the front, but it talks about a quote salesman from Chicago coming through and, and offering to sell them the plates and that's how they decided to get rich quick. Anyway, just another little interesting ruin along Route 66. I like these places. As I said a moment ago, I'm not hitting every Route 66 place through here because I've been through here a couple of times already. I'm just trying to hit the places that I've never visited. And this has been on my, been on my bucket list for a while. There's not many of these signs left. I'm at Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I guess the bridge in the middle is the original Route 66 bridge. And this is a neat uh, statue or monument that I'm going to step down and take a quick look at. This is pretty neat though. I guess it's the modern era of the automobile meets the old era of the horse and buggy days. It's kind of cool. Very detailed too. Mother seems a little concerned on the kid with a some type of pet. The Ribbon Highway. Nine feet wide. And from what I've read, there was a contract for a certain amount of money. And they decided that if they only paved one lane, that they could do twice as much road. And if you met someone, you were supposed to get off on the shoulder or share lane I guess get half on the shoulder but uh, yeah one lane they call it the ribbon highway a ribbon highway you can see it's nine feet wide concrete curbing on both sides with asphalt in the middle and then gravel on the shoulders that's funny but I think this will be my last video for this trip today I flew by a bunch of route 66 places because this trip wasn't about Route 66. I'm on my way home now. Uh, I'll go through Kentucky to see my, my dad and then be back in North Carolina with my wife on Saturday. And I've made jokes about my work. I still enjoy my work. I'm still good at it. Uh, the company treats me well. But 
I'm just ready to do my own thing on my own schedule. So I'm looking forward to retirement this year. I appreciate everyone that watched these videos and commented on them. I had a lot of fun. So uh, until I take another trip, remember, the worst day that I've had is still better than being at work. Bring out the friggin' boat!